Welcome to week two. Last week, we stepped aboard the NAP ready to tackle the challenges of our journey on the rapid river of climate change. Our attention, however, was more on the way the river was impacting our journey. This week, we ask you to shift your attention to the NAP and its elements. How well do you know your trusted boat, the NAP? If we are looking for ways for countries to better plan adaptation to climate change, the NAP, or the National Adaptation Plan, is a good place to start. It offers a roadmap for planners and decision makers to fully consider climate change concerns across sectors and budgets, from local to national. It sets countries on a climate resilient path, reducing vulnerability and building adaptive capacity. This week, before we stop at any island, that is any NAP element, we open a map to get a view of what the NAP journey looks like. The technical guidelines for the National Adaptation Plan process, developed by the least developed countries expert group, will serve as our map. We will discuss the guiding principles, elements and steps in the process of formulation and implementation of the NAP. This should help us see that just like our boat is as good as the journey it makes, the value of a national adaptation plan lies in the process. We will then turn to agriculture and how this sector specifically becomes part of a country's medium to long-term process for adapting to climate change. Okay then, let's begin. At COP17, parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or UNFCCC, asked the least developed countries expert group to draft comprehensive technical guidelines for NAPs. With the help of experts from the Global Environment Facility, UN agencies and academic and non-governmental organizations, the experts group published the technical guidelines for the NAP process in December 2012. Today, these guidelines are a key resource for medium and long-term adaptation planning, and they are extensively used by countries. The guidelines are not prescriptive. They are flexible. There is no single approach that applies to all countries, and each country can decide on their own the steps and sequence to ac accomplish their planning process. The guidelines are generic because they can be used by LDCs and non-LDCs alike. Finally, they are iterative because the elements, steps and activities build on and inform each other. These elements can be seen as distinct building blocks or islands coming together to form a process, a process of formulation and implementation. The four elements are A. Lay the groundwork and address gaps B. Preparatory elements C. Implementation strategies and D. Reporting, monitoring and review Each element includes 17 steps and indicative activities to provide further guidance and direction for decision makers. Of course, there are several cross-cutting themes such as communication and outreach, stakeholder involvement, education and training, all of which are relevant to more than one element. As we go through the elements, think of how they may apply in your country context. So, the goal of the first element, element A, is to launch the NAP process. Here, governments may have to create a mandate for the NAP process, establish clear roles and coordination mechanisms for ministries and key stakeholders. At this stage, it is important to consider what would be needed for a country to start the national adaptation planning cycle. Also, to think about questions like, what adaptation activities are already being implemented? What are the gaps in capacity, information and resources? In practice, example of outputs from this stage could be establishment of coordinating committees, um, a synthesis of available data and knowledge, um, a strategy or a roadmap for the NAT process. After laying down the groundwork, we arrive at the next stage, element B. On the island of element B, we find the preparation for the NAP in full swing. 
Here, countries can involve all stakeholders in preparing a NAP. A NAP that builds on and can be integrated into sectoral, subnational, and national plans and strategies. To do this, they may need to delve deeper into climate change scenarios and impacts and find out what are the current and future climate risks the country is likely to face. What are the main climate vulnerabilities of key sectors and regions? For this stage, countries may be working on uh, climate scenario, risk analysis and vulnerability assessments, appraisal of adaptation options, the draft of national adaptation plans. After the preparatory element B, element C is about implementation. This does not mean that all previous activities related to stock taking and capacity building have ended. In fact, new information may become available at any point and can be used to enhance the NAP process. During element C, focus shifts to adaptation actions, which can be prioritized within the country's long-term planning and implementation process. The questions to answer here are, how do we prioritize adaptation work at the national level, keeping in mind the broader development needs? What are the potential costs of implementation? How can these costs be met? During this phase, countries may produce strategies for implementing NAPs. Um, they may implement concrete adaptation measures in line with NAPs, or they may have to strengthen institutional capacity and regulatory frameworks. Beware and behold the final block, element D. Element D is about monitoring, reporting, review, and dissemination. These activities can be carried out throughout the NAP process. In Element D, countries collect information on the NAP process, assess it through a national m &E system, and share outputs to report progress to the UNFCCC. When exploring this island, the important questions to think about would be what information and metrics are needed to monitor progress, gaps, and lessons of the NAP process? What is the best way to share the NAP documents with the UNFCCC Secretariat and other stakeholders? Your time spent here may result in a plan for m &E, progress reports, and an updated NAP. We have gone through one NAP planning cycle on paper. Let's hear from Rohini Kohli, a lead technical specialist from UNDP and co-lead of the NAPAC program. Rohini will share some of the lessons that countries learned in adaptation planning so far. For most countries, it, it, is, it is a reality, whether they are developing countries or developed countries, that adaptation planning is still at an early stage. It's not really fully developed. Uh, most countries are only now beginning to, kind, to, to set up a more longer term um, institutional structure institutional framework. One of the lessons learned is that there's going to need to be a lot of intersectoral coordination. Uh, so, for example, in a country, uh, the agriculture sector and say, say issues regard, uh, related to water, which are cross-cutting, would need to be planned and coordinated together. So, uh, and that, that's easier said than done because at the moment, um, the central coordination structures are not necessarily geared up to adaptation planning because it's still at an early stage. The other lesson learned is that uh, there needs to be a sustained effort on generating knowledge, uh, not only uh, knowledge about um, interpreting climate information, but also other kinds of knowledge in terms of doing stock taking exercises, stock taking of the kind of um, initiatives that are already taking place, and how are we going to scale up that. So some of these kinds of issues are very important for as lessons learned, but these are still early lessons learned. As Rohini said, some countries have already shared their national adaptation plan. Why don't you take a moment to visit NAP Central and check them out? We discussed last week that the NAP process is important for implementing the Paris Agreement and NDCs, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Sendai Framework. The NAP is a strategic opportunity to align the three planning processes and also improve the impacts and sustainability of actions on the ground. This is why it is important that NAPs and NDC implementation build on each other. It would help to take a closer look at the linkages between NDCs and NAPs. 
Let's look at five ways in which countries can work to align their NDCs and NAPs. Number one, integrated governance. Countries can have joint coordination mechanisms and clear institutional mandates for NDCs and NAPs. As the responsibility for leading and coordinating both NDC and NAPs is likely to fall under the same ministry, many of the stakeholders involved will be the same. Number two, shared capacity development. Many of the planning technical skills, managerial skills, etc. are common to mitigation and adaptation. Countries can plan joint skill assessments and long-term capacity development interventions. This can range from training of academic institutions to incorporating climate change into school curricula. Number three, prioritizing co-benefits. Most probably many of the activities for NDC, NAP and SDG implementation will share similar outcomes for development and climate resilience. To identify and prioritize actions with maximum overlapping benefits for all three, countries can use economic and non-economic tools. Number four, integrated financing frameworks. A close involvement of ministries of finance and ministries of planning and public-private partnerships lead to a more credible process for investors and funders and a better investment climate. Number five, Monitoring and evaluation. This should not be forgotten. Here, building complementary indicators for adaptation and mitigation, strengthening m &E systems, and coordinating reports to the UNFCCC can bring forth the synergies between the NAPs and the NDCs. In the next video, we will focus on how to integrate one specific sector, agriculture. How can countries make sure that a sector like agriculture, which is the most sensitive to climate change, can rest on a solid planning process? How can they build the sector's resilience to negative climate impacts? Don't forget to take a look at the lecture notes and test yourself with the practice exercises. See you in the next video.